Blockchain, crypto, do you hear all kind of uh, DeFi, all these buzzwords? Who of you actually invested in crypto? For me, it's very interesting to see. Okay, it's kind of like 30, 40 percent. This is very important for me to discuss a bit what crypto is, where it became, where it started, and why it's so successful. Because sometimes people think they just want to make quick money, but that's not where the revolution is. That's speculative, that's speculation. And it's very dangerous also. Why? Why it's uh, coming new? Why it's it's uh, where is the, 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 the evolution? There are a few core concepts that define crypto what it is. One of the core concepts is um, anonymity. Anonymity is something that was taken away from us because of the revolution of internet and everybody being interconnected all the time and everybody everything being monitored our society needs anonymity for privacy it's essential so you can have let's say a discussion without being without showing your face to have an idea without somebody being able to to see who you are um, that's one aspect and this is what brought it uh, in forward uh, forward uh, to society. Then there's another aspect which is transparency. See now, you see, look at anonymity and say, okay, but if we're anonymous, how can we be transparent? Because it makes no sense. But what a blockchain does, it's a, a mechanism to record all transactions and to guarantee that this set of transactions are always and will be immutable, which means they cannot be changed by anyone, which means you can trust that what was written on the chain, on the blockchain, will stay there forever and anyone can see it, so anyone can check. So on one hand you're anonymous, and the other hand everything is tracked. If you're anonymous and you do something bad, and your identity is discovered, then everything can be tracked. So some people thought, okay, blockchain, we're anonymous, we can do something bad. It's not like that. It's not why it was invented. It's not why. It, it's new, it's not, it doesn't bring anything new. It just allows others to look at uh, what's being recorded and to see, okay, somebody's doing something bad, okay, we see that and then, you know, let's say justice takes care of that. Then there's another aspect which is, in essence, the decentralization factor. The decentralization factor is what allows the blockchain to exist without a, an intermediary, a central service or a central, I don't want to call it authority, it could be authority, but rather a, a central uh, entity that can decide to stop a service or introduce maybe um, uh, to stop certain transactions from happening or to stop uh, for some people or some uh, actors to use the system uh, like censorship it, it's 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 something that a central entity always can introduce censorship so the decentralization allows everybody in the ecosystem assuming a role of for Bitcoin, it's a miner, 
validator, their different names, operator. And this allows them to, to operate on the network, and the network is always available. So you cannot take down one unit, or like in, in the classical Web 2, you take down the server and nobody has access. Okay, you have multiple servers, you take down the data center, nobody has access. You, you know, have multiple data centers, you take down a service provider, then nobody has access. This is all spread and everybody's part of the network. And this is the true power, uh, the, the third power uh, in this case. Now, um, this is what society needs. Um, it was first adopted by the financial sector, obviously, whereas money is value, people want to transact value with integrity, with credibility, with transparency, everything we, I spoke about. So it's ideal and was applied initially to the financial sector. And this is how it became known to most of us. Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto in general is something that people know it's money. But it's not money. It's a different type of asset and it uses um, the blockchain technology. Now, what happens is this discussion is about Web3 and it's about privacy. Since we discussed about the basics of what is the core and what are the core concepts, now if you think about information or data being value in the end, because it's valuable, at least to us. And using it in an ecosystem that involves the blockchain, which ensures this high integrity, then we get Web3. And what Web3 does, compared to Web1 and 2, Web1 is reading, having a website, it's just an old 90s website where you can see pictures, read, and that's it. Web 2 is read and write, so you can write your stuff, it gets published, Facebook, what we have right now. And Web 3 is read, write, and own, which means that you can actually own the content you publish, and you can decide whether to share it or not without an intermediary, without asking Facebook to do it for you, or you can do it directly from your application uh, developed in such way. What does that mean to, to our privacy? Because this is um, the most important aspect. Uh, what happens now with Web2, um, and surely it's happening with Web3 as well, it's a constant interwined flow of information, of data, from everybody, they, they get in data centers and they're all quite exposed. Um, and our identity as human beings um, become more exposed and turn into this digital profiles or uh, somebody mentioned it earlier, uh, our internet persona, uh, you can call it this way, our personas, we have an identity which each service provider, they know different things about us. And these personas, we want to put boundaries but to our relationship with our service providers. And right now we can't. There's no, I don't know if there are laws, but eventually, eventually they will be because it's not fair. What a technology does and what privacy or future privacy technologies will allow people to decide using Web3 how we can share and who we share with. But not only that, using the blockchain, we can look back and see what exactly happened. So now we know that I have this information and this, this, and this entity seen it, and it's fair. We know they accessed it at this time, 
and we need to provide a reason, I think that's quite okay. Especially when it's sensitive information. For companies, for instance, uh, small companies, uh, mainly intellectual property, the research information. Now, we start from a core need of our persona, but then we look around and the businesses need exactly the same thing, and it's exactly what they lack. How is this Web3 actually helping us? Or, like, there is obviously a, a, a privacy um, aspect that uh, needs to be very well thought about. Uh, however, we need to discuss or think about how, what brings new to us? How is this new mindset of having a whole world running a computer spread like on other computers, how is this helping us? Besides looking at a way of storing this in one place and then securing this place with all kinds of security features will lead to this software problem we have, like uh, my previous uh, speaker, that we try to hire an army around this data, and then the armies can make it. There's so much data being generated, and this data, and there's a shortage for security engineers, software engineers, but specifically security engineers, but we have more and more of the data, and less and less of, of, of people to defend this. And we need to rethink how is the data managed, and then we need to take responsibility, since we all grew up in digital age, to be responsible for our clicks on our phones and assume that. Um, so far, the companies say, okay, you don't have to do it. The bank says, okay, you have a password from me to factor whatever, they do it for us. But if we assume our own responsibility, then we also are empowered to do more with our assets, which is our data. And we're also less vulnerable to companies trying to exploit access to such information. This starts easy. There is a few sectors. Healthcare probably is the biggest one. Um, because it's tying into insurance, you want to make sure, you know, uh, to, to, to keep your uh, his medical history so the insurance company doesn't exploit you um, because you, it happened for you to get sick or something and now they hike the rate, uh, it's something happening. So then healthcare is one of the things. Uh, then there's science, science. Imagine researchers can uh, do research and while doing the research they can share this research with other researchers because they use the blockchain and they already have a trail of activity on their own project and their peers cannot take advantage because they can prove any time the fact that they already did that research they use the same information so, and they prove it by having it, right? And then showing it in past has been used at this time. Now, imagine how research can flourish like this. Everybody can share anything and don't worry because they, the blockchain maintains that track. And this should happen transparently. There's another aspect that um, I would like to, to share with you. Maybe this is like a, something that more like a, a friendly recommendation to look at the blockchain and the technologies and the crypto space as something that should bring value. And because there is a temptation that when the bull markets happen to get all hyped about it and buy anything that's I don't know, anything that hits you. Uh, that's not a wise choice, obviously. I'm not a financial advisor or anything, but yeah, uh, I, I know a lot of people. 
but also look also don't say okay this is all you know stuff that's all um, scam and stuff like that because that's like the that attitude is either not good because then you miss on on uh, the novelty and uh, on uh, on the uh, innovation but what I can recommend is to look where the innovation look at let's say philosophical way of what the project is doing also of course capacity of technical um, doing the same things and you know um, business I mean this already goes into more like a analysis business analysis I'd say maybe consult somebody to analyze this kind of stuff but um, never just throw money now if you think about uh, this web where it's all over it's spread all over the world in uh, running on different computers you don't care which computer because you know the computers are running uh, and doing what you're supposed to be uh, uh, what the app is supposed to be doing and your data is protected and you can write software for customers for instance or you can use it um, using this Web3 mechanism. The question is, what would you do next? What is something that you want to use this reassurance for the privacy of the information? This is also the models where people think and then they decide, okay, this is best use case for this or best use case for that. I think it's important to have this internal mindset and then go out there. There's the Web3 uh, space is very vast and is growing now and I recommend everybody to look into it and yeah, financials uh, are coming soon so yeah, this is uh, the way uh, the space is going right now.